I'm considering making it a policy to simply have no expectations anymore when it comes to anything. My life would be infinitely more manageable as a result. I would no longer be disappointed by anything, and the saying, hope breeds eternal misery, will no longer have a foothold. I'm naturally a hopeful person, so this might be a bit difficult, but I'm willing to try, and the projects that Disney has announced in the upcoming years are enough that it just might kill any expectations from me entirely. Maybe it's naive of me to not completely have given up on Disney yet, but like I said, I'm a hopeful person who has enough memories and enough good nostalgia from the company that I still think there is the possibility that they can turn things around. Again, it's probably a futile hope with who they still have in charge of their entertainment division, but hope is all I have at this point. And apparently it's all Disney still has at this point as well, along with a healthy dose of delusion and narcissism in equal measure. That's the only way I can justify the announcement of a Rey Star Wars film. I've never managed to make it through the sequel trilogy entirely, having had more than enough after The Last Jedi. I'd seen both Han Solo and Luke Skywalker destroyed in favor of a character with all the personality and charm of an eggplant. Along with that eggplant having some sort of sexual chemistry with a character who acted a bit like the Tasmanian Devil for the first two films. No shade on Adam Driver, I'm certain he did the best he could with what he was given, as did they all, but clearly no amount of passion is enough to make up for writing that was, from the start, god-awful. Which is why I'm so baffled by this announcement, and even more so by the words of the woman who has been hired to spearhead this project. Haven't they all had enough? Isn't it time that someone called Uncle? The stuffing has been kicked out. It's lying on the ground, and now we're all just waiting for the cleanup crew. There is nothing left to give. What sort of lunatic thought that giving the female character least liked in perhaps all the Star Wars movies was a good idea? We can say it's Kathleen Kennedy all we want, but there has to be other creative minds, and I use the term loosely, behind this nonsense. And because I don't know just who those people are, that leaves us to discuss the nonsense because it's real and demanding conversation and dialogue. It also warrants an explanation of why this movie is going to fail before it ever gets released. There are quite a few reasons, but for the sake of this video's runtime, let's just discuss the most prevalent. The first reason that a Rey Skywalker movie will fail is simply put, apathy. Rey was perhaps the least fleshed out character in the sequel trilogy. The writers were desperate to create a Luke Skywalker type character without any of the nuance, any of the charm, or any of the ability to grow. They neglected the necessary training montages that Luke endured that contained wisdom and lessons, and instead settled for a parody of knowledge by a sarcastic, bitter man who had given up on life and all that he had believed in. Looking back, I cannot recall a single lesson that Rey learned from Luke. Her entire time spent on the island is based upon sharing memories and discussing Jedi history and highlighting the ways that Luke apparently failed all of his students. Oh, and thirst traps. Can't forget about those cringy thirst traps. There weren't any poignant or profound lessons from an Obi-Wan Kenobi or a Yoda. Instead, Rey was responsible for teaching Luke things, for pulling him out of his funk and ensuring that he remembers who he is, and she still wasn't entirely successful in that regard because he still destroyed all physical reminders of his past. She couldn't be allowed to restore him to the person that he was, not completely. And I'm convinced that the reason for this is due in large part to Luke Skywalker not being allowed to return to his former glory because then he would outshine the Golden Girl and her presence would go from being an irritant to outright neglected. If the movies had taken that sort of turn, if Luke had been prevented from returning somehow and Rey had somehow had to rescue him, whereupon he became the Luke Skywalker that we remember, I think a lot of people might have forgiven the film. It still wouldn't be loved, but it would be infinitely better than the nihilistic drivel that we got. Luke's entire purpose in the film was to be schooled by the perfection that was Rey, and she, in turn, was to learn nothing from him, but expose him to a new and improved worldview that she wholeheartedly believed in. She isn't a person, rather an icon, that all women are to ascribe to and believe themselves to be. Perfect utterly, teachable never, and powerful irrevocably. But perhaps the worst part of this mantra is not that it applies to Rey, but to all other females who have been written into a popular medium since 2015. It's been almost a decade of this nonsense, and while Rey herself is not an inherently abrasive character like so many others, she still possesses that vapid and shallow, better-than-thou persona that has driven so many people crazy. She doesn't work, she doesn't suffer on a level that is meaningful or believable, 
She doesn't experience pain in a way that is tangible to the audience, and her relationship to all the other characters around her is the epitome of shallow. One of the defining things about a well-written character is how their relationship to others is handled. If the audience does not see a certain depth in the primary relationships in a character's life, their authenticity as a whole will be called into question. Ray didn't have a comprehensive or sensical relationship with any character in this show. There are certain circumstances where bonds can form between characters that I like to call trial-by-fire relationships. And sometimes, those relationships can be the best kinds of relationships to display. But the problem is that all characters involved in that scenario must be fully fleshed out and have believable reasons as to why they're sticking together. With Rey, relationships with the other characters of Poe and Finn and even Kylo Ren consist of them doing nothing more than following her around and screaming her name at random intervals. In every tense situation, she is in command and the others either step back to defer to her or just aren't there. The only time I saw this change slightly was when Finn picked up a lightsaber to battle Kylo Ren after the death of Han Solo. And even then, that didn't last for very long. Of course, this scenario was hampered by the rest of the movie where he didn't really know what to do with himself and simply followed Rey around. It was hard to believe that he was a fleshed out character when he came from a situation where he was part of the mindless masses and simply went from serving in one cause to another which didn't really change throughout the course of the films. I really feel sorry for Finn, by the way. He could have been a really neat character, and instead he was shortchanged by writers and directors who didn't really know what to do with him and weren't all that interested in figuring it out. No wonder John Boyega is not really a fan of these movies. I guess my point is that Rey could have been interesting. She would never be as beloved as any of the original characters, given who was in charge of these movies, but she could at least have been liked. That would never happen, though, because I am beginning to realize that the point of all these new characters is not to be liked at all, but rather to present an icon or act as a figurehead, something to be gazed upon with awe, but never related to. She's a powerful woman, and that should be more than enough in certain people's minds for the masses to stand up and take notice in the current year. And speaking of the current year, that leads me into my second point about why a Rey Skywalker movie is all but a failure before the cameras even start rolling. Recently, some articles surfaced about the new Star Wars director, interviews from her past that people were quick to use in their arguments about why she has no business being in charge of a massive film like this, pointing to her as another mindless player in the culture wars that will soon be forgotten, save for the bad taste she will inevitably leave in the mouths of everyone who listens to her. I won't be discussing those articles and interviews, as they took place several years ago and don't really have any bearing on who she will be as a director. This quote, however, I do feel that it is important to discuss. You know, I'm very thrilled about the project because I think um, what we are about to create is something very special. And we're in 2024 now. And I think uh, it's about time that we had a woman uh, come forward uh, to shape the story in a galaxy far, far away. There are two things about this her statement that I find interesting. In the loosest possible terms, of course. The first is that it is current year. Yes, it is. It is 2024. But what on earth does that have to do with anything? People doing or not doing things should never be based upon what time it is in history. All this argument really does is absolve a person of responsibility by claiming that the era in which their actions occur corroborates and in fact encourages their version of morality in their actions. Much earlier in the 20th century, it was deemed acceptable to abuse one's wife or children. But that doesn't make it right, and it never will. Current year has absolutely nothing to do with morality or integrity or truth, and it never will. Charmaine's comments about how current year lends itself to a more gender-diverse Star Wars also does not make sense, given that women have been working in Star Wars mediums for the last few years. Did people forget about directors like Bryce Dallas Howard and Deborah Chow? That's not to say that the projects that they worked on were flawless interpretations of Star Wars, but that doesn't really matter in terms of context. And her second point about how it is time for a woman to come forward and shape the stories in a galaxy far, far away is just as baffling because I can only respond with, well, why? In the last 10 years, Star Wars has never lacked for female inclusion. It has never lacked for female stories, but each time a new project gets announced, it's like everyone involved experiences a collective form of amnesia and it's like it's the first time anything has been done with a woman present or included. I understand that it is the desire to make themselves look good that drives this bizarre form of psychosis, but it really does the opposite, encouraging a collective narcissism and delusion that is tired and repetitive. 
And yet it looks as if this movie is going to be rammed through before Kathleen Kennedy will bless us with her retirement and finally leave Star Wars behind to more competent people. Will it be watched? It certainly doesn't look like it. And from the vitriol and apathy that I have seen directed towards it, I can't help but feel a morbid sense of serendipity whenever I think about a Rey Skywalker film. Is it going to fail? Absolutely. It's just a matter of how bad the crash will be. I better get some popcorn. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. Be sure to let me know your thoughts about a Rey Star Wars movie down in the comments section. And let the conversations begin. Until next time, everyone.